Cuban. Good evening and thank you for joining us at 6 p.m. on YouTube. We have an interesting question to ask today. Just to bring you up to speed on what is happening, there are over 200 scientists from around the world who have written to the WHO and said basically that coronavirus can be transmitted through the air or it is airborne. Now, just to bring you up to speed, up till now, we thought that coronavirus would settle the virus COVID-19 would settle on surfaces, which is why we were sanitizing everything, washing our hands and maintaining social distancing of two meters or six feet. Now, basically, 639 scientists have said that COVID can spread through the air far beyond the six feet of social distancing guidelines. Now, in a comment on a piece that takes direct aim to against the WHO for its reluctance to update its advice, Researchers have recommended new measures, including increasing indoor ventilation, installing high-grade air filters, and preventing overcrowding in buildings and transport. Uh, Dr. Tanmay Mahapatra joins me right now to help us understand this. Dr. Mahapatra, what does this mean? Uh, first of all, have you, you know, do you agree to this, uh, to this letter by the scientists that it could in fact be airborne? As long as we have a possibility word mentioned there could, I completely agree because I mentioned before also, we are actually living on speculations based on scientific evidences leading to conjectures which are refuted very often. So we have to be sure that whatever we are hearing, whatever we are reading, we are interpreting them clearly. So suppose this 239 scientists writing uh, from 32 countries to WHO to talk about their, uh, to revise their recommendation and all those stuff, what they actually have spoken about. They have spoken about the possibility that the COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 virus can actually be suspending in air longer than this particular one meter or so. And that's why it is now imperative that we don't take this particular distance of one meter or something as the magical, mystical, safe line that beyond which nothing can happen. That kind of thing should not confuse anybody. So just let's see what is direct transmission and what is all these and how all these are have impl having implication with what you just said. When we are talking about direct transmission, that means some particle from the infected person directly traveling and reaching to a person who is within a distance through which that particle can travel, being suspended in air. And when I say airborne, airborne means that particle itself is not capable of being suspended, but the air is pushing it through to that particular person and then it can travel more. Now, all the evidences that are there talking about all these are depending on aerosols. When we talk mm -hmm. about aerosols, then there is always a possibility of a gush of air, something which can actually push through. Before also, before this paper and this discussion going on, before also, two papers coming from hospitals in Wuhan actually proved that, proven that, this uh, under aerosol, these things actually can transmit more. And there, then there comes the next question, what of which is actually talking about. It's not only the transmission, it's the next thing is in what context it can transmit. Number two, is it still infective when it is actually transmitting? And number three, where are those special situations which can happen? And those are the points based on which these recommendations need to okay. change. Let me, let me take this one by one then. Um, so what we're saying effectively, if I've understood correctly what you're saying, it means that unlike, let's say, air pollution, where we call it suspended particulate matter, which, which resides in the air, which means if I walk into the room, it's already suspended in the air and I can breathe it in. In this case, they're not saying that the virus can live in the air around us. It's saying that when someone coughs or someone sneezes, the travel distance of the virus is more than the six feet that, you know, that we had thought. It's actually a lot, it travels a lot longer in specific instances where there is a gush of air that's coming out of the body. Is that correct? 
yeah, a little modification here and there. So first of all, virus cannot live outside a living organism. So no virus is living anywhere. Virus okay. particles are actually particles of nucleic acid, which can enter into a body and become alive. Now, mm -hmm. as long as it is outside our body and in an inanimate environment, it cannot contain its infectivity for long time. So, given the correct definition of life, it is only when it is inside the body. But it is capable of becoming alive or becoming uh, functional, biologically functional, when it is inside a body. Now, in case of air pollution, the situation is also similar that when you actually get those polluted air through a particular gush of air or a flow of air, there are different air particles of different size and they work different. Now, let us talk about this, where the point is something which is actually having a droplet size of less than five micrometer that cannot travel more than that six feet or two meter or something like that. That is a general understanding. Now, that understanding is not changing based on what is being told here. The point is, it has been evidence that the direct transmission from one patient to another through this direct transmission of a fomite of an infected particle, that is how COVID is generally transmitted. This is the message. The message was previously that it can only infect another person through this direct transmission. Now, it is a recommendation from these scientists to WHO that please don't stick to that on that particular messaging only because in special circumstances like the nebulization air, like when we are actually extracting a dental something and for that we are actually giving some gush of air or something somewhere. Wherever there is a potential for having a, an aerosol transmission and a particle coming out with an extra speed from any particular nozzle that if infected can have that transmission for longer period. Now comes the next question. This longer distance, are they capable of remaining alive and are they capable of infective others? Potentially the answer is yes. And that is where this is very important. Previously, we thought that in special cases, this can happen, but probably these particles won't be able to infect others depending on that kind of transmission. Now that requires more research. And that is where we should not keep our eyes closed by only thinking of six feet or something, because beyond that in special situation, these can be infective and we don't know when that special situation is happening around us, maybe even from the air condition. So these are the things where we need to be how, cautious. How long can the virus uh, survive outside of a human body, doctor? Uh, it, whether airborne or otherwise, do we know for sure by now? So this is also this is also something that vary virus to virus, and it depends on its type of genetic configuration. There are differences in RNA virus and DNA virus and all those stuff. And regarding this particular novel coronavirus, this has varied since its past understanding that how long it can actually survive. But two to four hours in an infected material outside our body, it is actually the time till which it is definitely infected. That is confirmed. But there are evidences that even in moist surfaces, they can actually remain infective up to, up to the level of one day. So there are evidences. So there is no clear safety uh, kind of thing that if there is an infective material lying there for a certain period of time beyond which it is no more infective, that kind of black and white borderline is not there. But definitely within four hours anywhere, anything can be risky. And we need to follow the same principles of precautions. We need to be sure in one thing that nowadays mask is becoming any kind of mask. But N95 has some reason for calling them so often across the planet. So the recommendation should be number one, avoiding unnecessary social gathering or any kind of congregation. Number two, maintaining the individual distance so that as, 
as far as we can in some interaction so that we are not unnecessarily being closer and increasing our risk and number three washing our hands with soap and water whenever as many as times we can being at home as well as being outside using sanitizers as rationally as we can this remains the same so the advice is still the sms advice which is sanitize wear your mask social distancing and even with this new knowledge of the virus possibly being airborne in special situations where it's been aerosoled and becomes microparticles mask and sanitizing is still the old, is the best advice that we have to give yeah we need to understand this message very clearly it is not saying that it is airborne and not anything regarding direct this is just saying that definitely it is be through direct contact but apart from that in special condition it can be transmitted in a way that it may behave like airborne so we have to be sure airborne means air is carrying it beyond a particular distance it may not be like that it is because of the speed of the air it is being carried more its direct transmission is actually enhanced so this is kind of the situation and further research is warranted on this all right dr babatra thank you so much for always being so generous with your time i'm sure the audience is greatly benefited from this uh, clarity uh, we wish you very well uh, as you work and hopefully we'll all come out of this fairly soon so this is what we've learned right now that uh, the advice is still to maintain social distancing wear your masks sanitize as much as possible uh this doesn't mean that the virus is floating through the air it just means that the distance of 6 feet you would if you can maintain a higher distance between other people especially if someone is coughing or sneezing always always wear your mask if both people wear their mask then the possibility of infection comes down almost uh greatly all right thank you for watching remember we'll be back at 8 o'clock today where we talk more about uh, you know the impact that uh, the lockdown and coronavirus is having on uh, just regular people who are facing anxiety and depression and what you should be doing right now to keep yourself mentally fit as well that's at 8 pm this evening do come back